All right, we've almost made it. In this video, we're going to wrap up the project and light and render this puppy. So uh, without further ado, let's just do it. So we need to add a background to catch, you know, some ambient occlusion, shadows, and things like that. We'll add a basic background. Um, lots of ways to do this. We're just going to add a mesh cylinder. We'll keep it easy. 32 cylinders or uh, segments will be fine. Let's just zero out that X rotation. Um, we could have just hit backspace while hovering, but that's fine. Let's hit Shift C to reset our cursor, and then we can Alt G to move it up. Let's grab this bottom face, and then Shift S uh, selection to cursor offset, so it'll just put that flat on the ground. And uh, now we need to make it bigger. So we'll pull it up a bit, and then we'll just go ahead and uh, let's flip the normals to start. So select all of it, Alt N, flip. And now we can see through the back because we have backspace culling enabled with machine tools, right? Uh, the other thing, we don't need this top face. That top face right there, so we'll delete it. And now we have something that we can work with. So let's just scale it way up. We're going to just hit S and because the origin's there now and the face is there, we're going to scale it up. Now we don't need to scale it up any higher really in the Z than probably that. So we'll S shift Z and scale it way out like something like that. That might even be overkill. We can play with it. Uh, turn on our cavity and then next thing we'll do is auto shade it or auto smooth it at a really high value because we're going to bevel it. Uh, let's bevel this edge, grab this inside edge and then just let's get down so we can kind of see about how that gradient is going to look when we bevel this off. So go ahead and bevel this edge probably right up about there and then just scroll wheel up and give it give it a good number of segments um, so it'll be nice and smooth and now we can see what's happening there um, also you know like I say our auto in fact we don't even need auto smooth on it uh, we can just literally just shade smooth auto smooth actually uh, eats up resources calculating so there's no need for it because we want this smoothed off anyway okay so that's good to go uh, we'll need to set a material up for that, and we'll do that momentarily. But the next thing we're going to do is go to our filters. And to be honest with you, I don't really need this reference anymore. So you can either just pull this guy down, or you can grab in this corner here. Um, and don't go down, but go up. And you'll see there's an arrow there. And we're going to go, oh, whoops, we don't want to go that way. But we can just scroll. Sorry, guys make this another uh, property outliner and we're back to where we were and let's enable in the filters this selection toggle here so we can toggle the selectability of our background on and off now let's hit F2 and call this just BG for background or something Oh, I must have had caps lock on because I held shift and it gave me a lowercase font alright sweet so we'll turn that off now we can't select this likewise we could hide it for a moment because the next thing we're gonna do is again shift C Make sure the cursor's in the middle of the world. Shift A, add an empty object. And it, this can be whatever. I think we'll use a sphere. It doesn't matter, though. And then in the empty object properties here, we're going to uh, just pull on this and reduce the size, but we still kind of want to be able to see it. Um, the next thing we're going to do is with this empty selected, we should just be able to hit, as long as you don't have any cameras visible or anything, uh, Control I, and it'll select everything else. Or you could hit A and then deselect the empty and select it last or just box select everything and then make sure the empty is the active object whatever and then hit control p and we're going to parent to object keep transform that way nothing jumps or does anything bizarre um, and now we have this empty that everything's parented to the hierarchy should still be set up um, for us the way that it was um, except for in certain cir circumstances where the parent got replaced but now we have a master object that we can rotate and move around to place this thing on the floor so let's go ahead and unhide our background again and instead of moving it first we're going to go ahead and rotate it I'm going to bring up my rotate gizmo just to make all this a little more transparent of what I'm doing and I'm going to hold control and we're just going to go 90 with it and then we're going to go 90 with it this way and we'll fix how it's sitting on the floor but let's go into an ortho and man that reference image is just causing us no end of annoyance uh, I should have just replaced it that's what I get for being lazy guys and we're gonna just place this thing on the ground so let's move it up a little bit more I'm hitting G and then I'm moving it up in the Z 
something like that. It, it, you know, perfection is in the eye of the beholder. Now we're going to do something a little neat. Uh, so realistically, this thing is not laying on the ground and we don't want to penetrate it too much. So what we need is to rotate it from this point over here. So let's go ahead and be a little more precise, move it up. And then let's go ahead and grab this keyblade item. Actually move it down just a little bit. After my spiel on perfection, I want to get it fairly perfect. And then hit uh, Shift S, cursor to select it, and now your cursor will be there. Now we still have a global orientation. So if I bring up the rotate tool again, you'll see that we're not uh, looking at the cursor's orientation here. We just want that position um, for it. So what we'll do is to set the 3D cursor position to that. And now we can grab our empty object, okay? And now when we rotate, it's going to rotate the empty from that point, you see. So this is super handy, needless to say. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go way over here, and I'm going to hit R. And what axis is it? It's the green axis. So it's the Y axis. So I'm going to hit R, Y, and then you don't have to be, have to click on anything that way, you know. Uh, it's going to work out better. So we'll just lay it on the ground, something like that, R, Y. You can hold Shift if you need to slow it down. That'll be fine. Uh, the next thing we'll do is we'll go into this view. We can leave the, the cursor right there. But in this circumstance, what I think I want to do is I want to change our rotation to a local rotation um, so that it'll, uh, you'll see that it'll um, have the local gizmo, basically the local orientation of this object rather. Now that we've oriented it, you see that it's changing that a little bit. So that's what we want here. This time we want RZ, so we're going to rotate it in the Z. So we're going to RZ and rotate it downward like that. And now the Keyblade is resting how it would rest, um, period, on the numpad to get us back. Um, it's resting how it would lay on the ground um, because of the weight of it. So the next thing we'll do is we'll pose this chain out. <laughs> um, you know, it's twisted. We can work with that. So let's go into edit mode. <clears throat> let's grab. Did I not put... Oh, that's fine. It's not a big deal. Um, let's just lay this thing on the ground too. So the first thing we'll do is just grab this whole chain, roll it down, um, and we'll do something like this. Let's first pose this out because, okay, I'm going to hide that background, guys. It's just driving me crazy. It's affecting my zoom because I have a mouse depth zoom. Also, the local, we need to get back to our global. Okay, so first let's let's fix this. Now this guy should have everything else now. So let's reparent this to that, okay? Object keep transform, okay? And then this one to this as well. Object keep transform. All right, and now it's gonna rotate from the origin. So let's just rotate this in an interesting way. Um, so we're just gonna hit R and use our view actually because if you don't really want, like when you're doing something like this, a perfect rotation isn't necessary. Um, background keeps coming back and I just don't know what to tell you guys about that. Um, it's not necessary because a little bit of mayhem and uh, you know off kilter rotation that you might not normally put on something actually can help it a lot. Now we have to make some room for the chain here and we'll probably keep playing with this for a moment. I think I'm going to rotate it out like as if it were coming this way. So let's rotate it this way a little bit. Just hit R and then turn it out. And now we'll start to kind of see how, um, with the G key, moving it to maybe how it would lay. Now, if it were laying that way, it would also probably be tilted this way, I would think. Um, something like this, maybe, I don't know. Again, just got to pose it in such a way that it's believable. And this stuff can be fiddly, so I will try not to do that. Um, I can always fiddle more with this off camera, but you guys get the idea. That I'm going for here so let's move it back I do just want it to be fairly believable and the other thing is how close is anyone gonna look at these renders that's the other piece of it so that's probably good it'll probably make it to where we can't hardly see that clip in the render that we did um, we may rotate this we may rotate, let's rotate this 180 degrees. We'll see with our cameras and we're gonna go to local again. Um, so let's just start dragging in this axis and then type 180, drop it. And we'll see what happens with that. So we'll play with that a little bit more and we'll go back to global. All right, cool. So now let's start doing something about this chain. So uh, we don't wanna move it in 
Let's see, so let's reparent this to that. Object keep transform. Should be able to move the chain now, yep. That is also a piece, and that is a piece, and so you just have to fiddle with your hierarchy a little bit sometimes to get things kind of going. Not a big deal. All right. So we're going to do this and rotate this guy too because he got rotated with the empty. And since we're putting, we know our floor is on the ground, we know that's going to lay fairly on the ground. Um, now let's start to pose this chain out before we worry about this twist because the chain is going to writhe, wiggle, and dance. Um, let's roughly move it into place in object mode though. And let's say that it's going to be like inward a little bit. Now nah, we'll just we'll just drop it like in the middle somewhere. Um, again, this is where I could honestly play because you got to think about like composition and you know the Fibonacci ratio or the golden ratio, whatever you want to call it, the Fibonacci spiral, all this stuff, photography principles, rules of thirds. You got to think about all these things. Uh, but right now, what I want to do is I just want to show you guys how to get a fairly appealing render out of here. So let's just move it. I went into top view so I can just hit G and kind of start moving these points. Um, man, it doesn't like that, does it? I think a Bezier curve would have gotten us further here, uh, even though I advised it against it. It looks like you can't go too far with these. A Bezier curve definitely will get you further here. Um, but we could probably do something like that. I wonder if we could... Um, could rotate the whole thing first of all so we could kind of kind of do this bring it over something and I wonder if we can bend it so let's try to bend it let's put our cursor here so shift s cursor selected and then let's use the cursor placement and then grab these and try rotating it. No, it's just not, there's only so far it's gonna let us. If you guys do this, uh, probably do the Bezier curve <laughs> that, I, that I recommended but didn't show you. Um, it's the same procedure, it's just different kind of curve. That's okay, we can, the chain links kind of look cool when they kind of straighten out anyway. That one's bending too much. Um, anyways, I'll play with this off camera. So now what we got to do is we got to fix the twist in the chain. Um, so the first thing we'll want to do is we'll want to place Mickey, um, and we're gonna we're probably gonna refine this just a little bit when we uh, let's go back to local when we get to our camera here just in a second because we're gonna realize that all this fidgeting I'm doing isn't mattering because let's see this still has to be parented to the Mickey uh, isn't gonna matter because um, we just don't know what our camera angle looks like yet. So it's all for naught, if you will, you know. I wanna make sure this Mickey's gonna be seen in the render, so for that reason, let's pull him to where he's like something like this, and then let's uh, let's kinda of take a look here in a minute. Maybe we can kinda of tilt him as well and see what happens. We'll see what that looks like when we get to it. I don't know, we'll check it out. All right, so let's see if we can get this to get a little closer without messing our chain up too badly here. Um, more likely we ought to just do it. So what you can do with the chain is you can select a point or number of points and you hit Control T and that'll twist uh, the links. It'll probably work best if I grab two because then the twist will be more gradual. Um, and even, let's grab them all and see if we can get a nice um, gradual twist on this thing. So we could probably twist it a little bit and deselect a point and twist and deselect another point and twist it again. That way we're not gonna see any visible twisting in the chain links. And then uh, now we can move the Mickey into place a little bit better something like that, I don't know. Again, we're gonna set up our camera here in a second. We'll take a look at it through the camera and see what it really needs to, to do. Cool, all right. And I may actually end up going back and putting this cursed thing on a Bezier curve just to make sure that we can get an interesting chain position because it looks a little straight. I kind of wanted it to come around, wrap around on itself. It's not very interesting to look at. 
All right, the next thing we're gonna do is let's go ahead and do what I mentioned there and make a camera. Um, to do that, let's just go into a rendering tab because it's gonna give us a, a little bit more to work with here. Um, and we're gonna hit page down because you have machine tools by now. If you don't, shame on you. And I'm gonna use it. So page down, click on smart view cam. Now, if you haven't made a camera, you could always uh, shift A and make a camera and then you know move it and rotate it, but we're not gonna do that. If you hit smart view cam, you'll notice that it says, if you don't have a camera, it will make one uh, from the view. So what we wanna do is go ahead and hit alt click, which will create a camera from current view. And so now it's made us a camera. Um, what it hasn't done is it hasn't locked it to our view for piloting. So normally what you would do, and I'm not gonna do this, is you would select your camera, then you would hit the end panel and you would go to view, and you would say lock camera to view, and then you can pilot your camera around. But we have machine tools, so we won't be doing all those steps. We're just gonna hit page down and we're gonna say lock to view. And now when I zoom out and I navigate around as normal, you'll see in this view put, viewport over here that it's actually what it's doing is it's physically positioning my camera for me and this makes it much easier to compo you know compose a render composition here um, so that's just kind of a no-brainer there and then over here we could even if this is in the way you can now say hide cameras from your toggle there um, let's turn our background on again real quick um, it's not really helping us. What we ought to probably do here is start working on our materials too a little bit. So for that reason, we could go to the shading tab or you could just make this a, a shading viewport. Um, I'll go to the shading tab. And work on our renders a little bit. So our materials. So and your, we'll just use Eevee for this. Uh, you can use your look dev or material preview mode, but let's turn the world opacity way down um, because it's just, causing me pain to look at. Um, and then let's select an object and it'll show us uh, materials for that object over here in the shader editor. Um, now, if you have multiple slots, you have to click the slot here and then choose which material you wanna work on. Um, if you click here, it's actually gonna physically switch the material that's in that slot, which you don't wanna do. Let's not look at that, let's not look at that. So let's work on this material here, which is the hilt material. Now. We, when we're, you'll be confused because you're like, oh wait, it's yellow. But again, remember that's just your viewport color, which is all the way down here. So let's do something that mimics it. Let's go ahead and hover over this and control C and then come back up to our shader editor, either here or here, and then control V over it to give it that color. And when we switch back to our material uh, preview mode there, we're gonna see it now. Um, we don't want it to be metallic and we want the roughness to be a bit lower. It'll be a bit shinier. So maybe something like a, 0.35, something like that. And now this one is probably fine. It's the handle material, but it, again, it's a little, it might be a little not black enough. Um, it's a good PBR compliant black, but uh, Eevee doesn't really work the same way game engines do perf you know, to a T, if you will. So anyways, moving on, we've got those fairly looking good and then we'll select the light metal slot here and we'll change our colors on this too. Let's take a look at what we had in our viewport. Yeah, it was just white, but obviously it was metallic. And I think that white is too much, so we need to knock the base color down a darker shade and then the roughness quite a bit down. We're gonna go like 0.2 on this metal. We're gonna make it shiny. Maybe that's too shiny. Let's go 0.3. Um, yeah, you're seeing the reflections, but it's not like mirror reflections here. Maybe 0.25, split the difference. All right, cool. Nice, and it's not so shiny that it's washing out all our details. Now, I obviously I didn't put any UVs or materials or roughness, scratchy textures or anything on this. What we're gonna try to do is create a compelling stylized render from what we have here. Um, the next thing we need to do, and we'll just do it in this viewport, is we need to actually set up our render viewport. So this is not what you'll get when you hit render, this right here. This material preview mode has nothing to do with what happens when you hit render image. Uh, in fact, just to prove that point, I hope I'm not in cycles. Yeah, so you notice you hit render and you're like, why does it look like crap? Well, because when you hit render, what you're seeing is what you get in your render viewport mode here. 
Um, and that is based on a few different things. One, it's based on the settings that are up in here. And in, the, and in here, it's telling me that, yeah, I want scene lights to have impact, which we have none. And I want the scene world to have impact. Well, if we go look at our scene world right here in this little red globe looking tab, we'll see that I have an HDRI because I have it embedded, but I shouldn't. So what we need to do is we'll, uh, I'll disconnect it. And now it, this is what you would have by default because this, this is a default scene color, default scene strength, okay? So that's not gonna fly. Uh, and if we hit render, this is probably more than likely what you'll see because there's just like no light of any kind to speak of. So let's go get an HDRI image. So to do that, click on this little unassuming circle next to the color uh, input. By the way, guys, you can do what I did and embed any HDRI in this scene that you want. You just go ahead and go file, new, new scene, and in a new blender, fresh blender scene, put all the things you want in it. HDRIs here, cube cylinders, whatever here different settings, viewport settings, and then go defaults um, right here, and then say save startup file. And then anytime you click new, it's gonna give you that scene. So every new Blender scene I make will have that HDRI embedded in it. But anyways, I digress. So click on the little circle and go environment texture. Um, there's one that says environment, oh, there's one that says image texture. That is not correct, so don't be fooled. And then click open. All right, so we're gonna go where I know I have um, uh, up one level where I have some HDRIs. So Dropbox in my circumstance, the morgue, um, HDRI, and then we'll use that Cathedral too that I, that I have. Um, and now you'll see we have back kind of what we had and there's some light on it. And it's just the result of the HDRI, no lights, no scene lights. All right, now how do we control the rotation of this HDRI? Well, Simple. In the shader node editor here, in the graph editor, there's a little drop down off to the left and it says object. But what we want to uh, do is select world. And this lets us select the world. Now, I already have some nodes set up, so I'm going to get rid of that. Um, and this is what you'll see once you've hooked up an image. It actually drops the image into this world graph. Okay. And so what we'll do is with the node wrangler add on enabled, um, literally just edit preferences. And there's no reason to ever not have this enabled. Uh, under add-ons over here, type node and enable the node wrangler add-on. If you expand it, there's a list of hotkeys and stuff and you can check that out, but there's only a couple main ones that I use and I use them all the time and everybody uses them. So with this node selected and node wrangler selected, let's just hit control shift T. Uh, shift T, control T, there we go, control T. <laughs> and what it's going to do is automatically app, add a mapping node and a texture coordinate node for you, which is what you need to have control over rotating this image. And I know that from playing with it before that I just want a negative 183 rotation on this. So it puts the highlight towards the back here. So you see if I drag this, it's rotating the HDRI. And if I, uh, I might be able to, no, I can't show it in this particular render view. But if you add it to your... Um, HDRI list here, which you can do, you can install HDRIs, then it'll always show up in your look dev mode and you could preview the image in the background too if you wanted. Anyway, so we're gonna do negative 183 there. All right, so now we have an HDRI and we have some things going. So let's go back to our render tab. Um, the next thing we should do is probably start working on the background. So let's bring that back. And also we don't have, there's a number of things that we don't have. So we also don't have a light. Let's add a light real quick. So let's hit shift C to reset our cursor, make sure that that's in the center of the world there and hit shift A and add a, um, a light. So we're gonna go light, add an area light. That's the most popular kind of blender light. They're just very versatile. Um, <laughs> if you could get it to go up in the Z, it would be ideal. And we're gonna switch this to our render view, of course, so we can kind of see what we're doing. Um, now I'm gonna hide the background again, unfortunately, because this can be a pain. I wanna put it kind of off over here, maybe, something like this. And to do this, I just like to rotate into the orthos and then hit R and point it at the thing. And then like go into my various views and like point it at the thing. Um, Cause then you know it's hitting it. So something like this and I'm also going to play with the size a little bit. I also might move it a little bit in the, that direction and aim it a little more angle. 
something like that. And then let's go ahead and make the size a bit bigger. Now the size um, has to do with how soft the shadows are. So let's go ahead and make it about two meters big and make it nice soft shadows. Now you can't really see that yet. So let's bring our background back and let's enable shadows. So let's go to our render settings here. And what we need to do is render or enable ambient occlusion. You already see that that has starting to take effect. Um, let's look at our uh, background material and make it something where we can see. So let's select our background. Let's make a new material for it. Let's drop the color down a little bit. We'll figure, I know I want to make it kind of a blue color. So let's just make it that blue, a little bit brighter. Maybe something like this. And let's, uh, what's the roughness look like? Let's make a, what? I don't know. Let's just leave it at default for the moment, and, but at least we can see our ambient occlusion now. Uh, so we'll turn off selectability for the moment on that. Uh, Bloom will want, and we'll play with that at some point. And then under shadows, uh, definitely set high bit depth shadows. Um, 2K and 2K will be big enough for what we're doing for sure. And you can play with light, th light threshold if you want. Um, so I'm thinking, oh, and the other thing, this is really important. Here's a pro tip. Not everyone does this, but it's, it has a big impact. So go grab your light and go into your, your light parameters. And on the shadow settings for the light, turn on contact shadows. You see immediately that has, um, it's, it's basically uh, casting local reflections and having an effect on um, the contact shadows. And that will always give it a bit more realism. So already we're off and running. Things are looking a bit better. Um, which is good. Now we have to play with our light intensity because we're not really getting what we want from the light. And there you go. And we're getting some nice directional shadows there. Um, I'm not really sure how hot we want this thing. Also, we probably don't want, lights are never really white. I know a lot of people render that way, but I always find it to be a little jarring. So I put a little bit of warm hue into it to offset the blue. And we'll see if we can get away with that. Now it's a little bright. Maybe something like 35 for now. And let's crank the size back up to two. And you can immediately see that when we, like if we go up to five, look how soft the shadows are. Go back down to one, they're much sharper. So we'll do like a two meter size light. And we'll work with that for a moment. Um, the next thing we could do immediately just to get a look that I know that I'm going for and not, um, I did a little bit of comping on the images for the thumbnails and stuff that you see in Photoshop, but we're not going to do that here. What we can do though is go down to film and your render properties here and you can go to um, color management. I'm sorry, film transparent. Okay. So that's another one you're going to want to want to see. So if we hide the background, now you can see the image, <laughs> my bad. So this is what will allow you to render if say we didn't have a background blocking the image and this were just floating in space and you didn't want this, you didn't want this background to render into the, like if we render right now, you're gonna see it. Um, oh no, you're not. And the reason why is because the background is still renderable even though it's hidden. So now if I hit F12, it won't render. So if you don't wanna see that and you, you don't wanna see any of those things, um, what you can do is click transparent. And then now when you render, it'll render it and it will also render an alpha channel. Yeah, so if we go to our output settings here, if you have RGBA and a format that supports it, it'll give you an alpha channel uh, no matter what in that circumstance. It's pretty cool too, because now you can see your ambient occlusion pass and stuff. So if we like unhide this, you can get like a nice AO render. Anyway, so we'll go back to combined. And <clears throat> where was I? Let's see. So contact shadows, ambient occlusion, things are looking pretty good. The next thing, oh, what I was getting at was we'll go down to color management and we will set it from under this drop down that says look. We're gonna play with this and we're gonna give it like a high contrast look. You can see that if we go to none, it looks more washed out and you can even go like very high contrast, which is a little too dark, I think, for what we're trying to do. Um, so we'll do something like high contrast for this and it gives it a little more pop, a little bit more saturation and uh, definitely more contrast without a doubt. So that's looking pretty good so far. Uh, the next thing really is just to kind of start, just go back to the drawing board a little bit. Also, this is a render view. Um, this is our image editor. We'll change this to a shader editor. And I just want to play with our uh, 
let's turn on our overlays so I can see what I have selected and let's be make sure we're an object and we're in the metal this metal is too dark now that I see it in the render view so we want to brighten that up just a little bit something like this it's looking a little bit better and that's all fine and dandy we could probably start playing with our bloom and uh, change the intensity of the bloom lower the threshold not too much and we can play with that a little later. We don't have anything that's like screaming hot to catch it, like emissive or anything like that. Now here's some of the most important things, and I don't find a lot of people focusing on this, which is amazing to me. Um, let's do this. So with just, we don't really have a final pose here, but it looks okay. Let's hit render. And now if we, we can just scroll and kind of see what we have. And you're like, okay, great, this is great. Um, and it looks fine. But what we'll do now is we'll switch to slot two we can close this window and now I'm going to add a couple more things so the first thing I'm going to add is a we're going to go under light probes under shift a we're going to add a reflection cube map all right and man this background is killing me oh I know why we got to set our back face calling in this view um, so actually the positioning of this is probably fine I'm going to pull it up so I can see where the pins are um, because I think they're way in here, no? So th this is really important. It's basically a, like a light mass importance volume, this combined with another volume that we're gonna do here in a second. So let's go into the settings for this and let's make the radius bigger. Let's make it cover most of our scene. Anywhere that like is gonna be seen in a render, we want it kind of uh, somewhat covered. And then we'll add one more and we're gonna go into light probe and add in a radiance volume. And likewise, this just needs uh, to be scaled up so we'll just scale it way up, like way up, like like that big. It just needs to cover the area of the render, the active frame pretty much. And just right off the bat, that's gonna help because if we go now to our render tab under indirect lighting, now all we have to do is we could probably play with this, crank this up, cube map size, some of these settings we could change. Um, bring that up and then just say bacon direct lighting and give it a second you'll see a progress bar here at the bottom doesn't take long and now already you're seeing something that's looking much better if i turn off my overlays here we hit render this is a great way to compare your renders because now i can just hold control over this uh drop down and scroll down and then up down and then up you see that this is having a dramatic effect on lighting um, and it's showing me a number of things it's showing me that we probably don't have a very good lighting setup and we have probably too much contrast so let's fiddle with a few things here so let's take our high contrast to a medium high contrast and let's go ahead and grab our light and we will take that amount up something like brighter so let's let's say 70. all right let's do i don't know if that's all correct so let's bring our light in a bit closer so if we're going to go move and we're going to bring it to a local axis and we're going to get a little bit closer here i think we're going to take it down in size since we moved it in and let's bring the light way down because it's actually it is pretty hot so let's bring it way down i think there's other ways that we can get um, this thing kind of lit and and happening the way that we want to. I think it's our floor material could bounce some more light up. Also, I think what we'll do is we'll give it one more uh, indirect bounce, so one more diffuse bounce. Let's look at our other settings. And, yeah, cube map. Let's go something like this might be okay. Yeah, let's do something like that. So let's take a look at the materials for our background. So first we'll have to make it selectable again. We'll go to the background material. And blue's probably okay. And I think we could probably bring the roughness down. Let's make it like a 0.35, something like that. Also, I feel like we actually wanna saturate this guy a bit more, um, like even brighter 
It's already pretty bright, I guess. Just a little bit into the orange, just so it's really bold and heavy. Um, that's probably going to look a little bit better there. I feel like we could probably rotate our light just a little bit too towards the hilt so our shadows hit the angle we want. And then also, what's our handle material look like? Let's just take one more look at that. Um, there it is. Yeah, that's probably fine. Maybe just not quite so dark. I darkened it up too much. So let's look at that. Let's look at that in Eevee. So Eevee can also be told to be similar. And now we're seeing a better representation of like what the render will look like, um, though we're not seeing exactly what it'll look like. Brighten that up a little bit. Okay. And then because I fiddled with the light, I am going to rebake the indirect lighting. Now let's take also a look at our probe. Probe is um, probably okay. I think I probably made it a little big, but yeah, let's drop it into there. That's fine. The irradiance volume is there. It's doing what it needs to do. Um, but we'll just bring that up a little bit. Everything is within it. So uh, let's go ahead and turn this off. And we can hide in this view if we want um, volumes. And that should get rid of, oh, is that not it? Uh, lattices, empties, oh, light probes, derp. All right, cool. Um, so let's just rebake the lighting now. So go back to your lighting tab or your render tab and bake in direct lighting. Oh, I know. <laughs> I just saw a big problem of why we're not getting quite what I'm hoping for here either. But that's okay. It only takes a second to bake this lighting. And while it's doing that, I'm going to see if I can change this viewport to the image editor and look at our render result in this window. This is new. It's kind of kind of loud. Um, okay, so let's change it to slot three. And the other big one is sp screen space reflections. We must turn that on. Refraction we don't need. Um, I don't want a half res trace on. Um, that's going to, but, but just notice, just turning that on is what allows, um, you know, local reflections to cast on from one object to another. So that's going to have a huge impact on lighting, as you can see. Um, I don't think I need to, but I'm kind of a compulsive light baker because I'm not sure 100% that if what I just did is requiring a rebake. So I'm going to bake and I'm going to pause the video and be back in just a few seconds when it bakes. Okay, our lighting bake is done. Uh, we've baked our lighting, we can render, but before we do that, let's just do a final pass on our render output settings. So we're in the render output tab here, uh, 1920 by 1080 image. And so that'll be your size output. Down here under output is where you'll set a directory for it to spit it out. And here's your format, RGBA, if you want the alpha included, and then your color depth and so on. Um, and then you'll simply just go to the slot in the um, sorry, in the image editor here, and you'll go image, save as, and you'll get a dialogue where you can further configure those settings and you could save your render out. You can even change it to a JPEG if you're just gonna post it straight to web or something like that. And I really hope that you had fun and uh, found that this was interesting. And anyways, I just hope you guys are loving using Blender like I am. If you guys have any questions, feel free to please reach out or uh, leave questions in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them and check me out on ArtStation. Thanks a lot.